All right, so here we are, Troy built uh, pressure washer. It's got the GCV 190. So um, the first thing I noticed when getting this is, so the pull cord is out like that, and there is no, there's not gonna be no starting this this motor with this uh, top piece, this uh, starter cord uh, recoil piece, whatever you want to call it. So. Um, as you can see, so there's a metal ring right here that the rope pulls against, um, like this. And uh, so this, as you can see, it's been pulled and it ripped all the way up through here. And uh, this piece is just demolished. So first off, what that tells me is that the motor it was very hard to pull over and they were trying to force force the cord and trying to turn it over and they said they thought it was locked up so it was hard to pull so that's what this uh that's what this uh tells me is that uh, it was very hard to pull over and maybe almost felt like it was locked up and they were trying to force it and it ripped up and it came up all through here and uh so this piece is demolished so we got to replace that first before anything i got this piece right here on amazon for this series motor i think it fits a 162 um so yeah i ordered this on amazon um so we're gonna take this top piece off uh and something else i wanted to note is that when i was inspecting this pressure washer um so it had a bunch of oil. I already wiped it off. There was a bunch of oil all right here and uh, leaking all out right here through the valve cover. So that's, I think that maybe what happened, this pressure washer may have tipped over or, or it may have, um, it may have set, uh, it may have set on the, on that side too long. And the oil seeped through and it's all in the combustion chamber and maybe uh, an excessive amount in the valves. Probably the spark plug is fouled out too. Um, we're going to uh, look at further into this too. Hopefully we'll have to take the head off and do a head gasket and have to clean all that out. We're going to see uh, what we can do with this. Right. here's this piece so yeah as you can see this thing see the cord it came all across and so this is going to be junk uh so immediately yes um a lot of people might think it's locked up too that the pressure washer is locked up a lot of people might scrap it but there is always uh something we can do man these small engines there's always something we can do to fix unless it's just completely the engine is blown but uh most of the time it's fixable so um let's see i'm turning this and the motor is definitely not locked up <clears throat> so um we definitely got compression to take this piece off and inspect the coil So, um, there's no oil up on the top. I, I'm going to assume with the oil that was all down here and leaking out the valve cover, I'm going to assume that um, it just laid on its side and that oil just leaked off into the, um, into the combustion chamber and all on top of the piston potentially. I'm going to hope that that's the issue. So, um. There's no oil up here on the coil or nothing like that. So um, let's check the oil itself. You're gonna have the dipstick right here on this side, on the right side, on this one in particular. Okay. It doesn't look like it's overfilled. Hold on one second. I was just checking to make sure it's not overfilled, guys. So um, that's another thing. If, if these little motors are overfilled, if they're overfilled with oil, that can cause the same issue. Um, 
So you want to make sure you're not overfilling these. Like I said, this oil looks bad anyway, so we're going to drain it and put fresh oil in, in this system uh, here shortly. Let's go ahead and get this piece on. All right, got that piece on, so let's just see what happens from here. Yeah, that is still hard to pull, so, um... So, a lot of the times, one of the first things you want to do is put your uh, hose on in your gun, and you can, it'll be pressure in the pump that you want to release. All right, we're going to install this rocker arm now. I'll try to make sure there's not a bunch of grime or anything on my hands that'll fall up in the engine and contaminate your motor or nothing like that or whatever. All right, so set that and stick your pin right through there. Pretty self-explanatory. Boom. And uh, see our exhaust valve is unstuck. All right, next one I'm gonna do is uh, take the spark plug off and see what that looks like. So move the boot, move the spark plug boot out of the way. Take the spark plug off. They're easy to knock over really when you think about it. Um, or you might not think twice about setting it on its side or, or something. So uh, this thing just looks completely fouled out, covered in oil. So oil is gonna be all in the combustion chamber and everything. Um, up in the valves, we're gonna take this valve cover off and uh, and go from there. So we're diving down into the, under the valve cover. This is sealed with silicone. So you might have to work at it um, on getting it off. You might have to pry at it. So uh, let's take a look at our rocker arms and our cam gear and uh, see what everything is looking like. Damn, if it'll focus. There we are. See, uh, see that crack right there? Yeah, this thing is just completely cracked. Um, yeah, right there. And then even if you come on this side, there's a crack too right there. So we're gonna have to replace this rocker arm. And now I'm gonna look at our, um, I'm gonna take a look at our uh, compression, uh, compression release. So it's hard to show it. Um, so when the cam lobe, when the cam lobe uh, hits that exhaust, the exhaust rocker arm. Uh, damn. So there's the lobe about to go down and hit the rocker arm, which pushes this and opens your exhaust valve, which, you know, lets your exhaust out. Um, so see, it goes down, it doesn't even lift that. It doesn't even, yeah, it's not, that's not even lit with that uh, rocker arm cracked like that. It's not even, see, it'll go and hit the intake to let your fuel and air ratio into the uh, combustion chamber. It's not even, uh, it's not doing nothing with the exhaust. It's not opening it. It's not pushing it and opening it uh, to let your exhaust out. So that's why it was, it's backfiring out. Um, that's why it's backfiring out the intake or out the carburetor. So we're going to have to replace this rocker arm for sure. You can pull this pin out and then this should just come right out the rocker arm. And, uh, 
Yeah, you can see where it's cracked and uh, it's not that exhaust valve isn't even opening. So, um, so that's gonna be our issue. So we're gonna go and get a new rocker arm. All right, so we're back fixing a Troy built pressure washer. It has the GVC 190 motor. Um, I know some of the push mowers and stuff have the GVC series. Um, so uh, we got the exhaust valve rocker arm. Make sure you get the exhaust valve one. If that's the side that is broken. Here, this is Honda Genuine Part. I ordered it on Amazon. There's the part number in case y'all need it. And then also go ahead and get some uh, gasket sealer. All right, anytime I order a part online, I just like to put them side by side and make sure that uh, they indeed are the same. These two match up, so uh, it should be a perfect fit. That was a Honda Genuine part. Um, so yeah, the with this pressure washer um oh, crap come on <sighs> there it is <laughs> uh yeah with this pressure washer um you know like i said there were immediate uh telltale signs you know to look on to inspect the valves and uh check everything under the valve cover just because with it backfiring oil um, out the intake, uh, the carburetor so much, as you could see on the air filter. And with the recoil pull cord, uh, with it being so hard to pull and so hard that it broke through the plastic, these are just kind of, you know, things pointing towards that direction. So, um, you know, I did, I did go ahead and put fresh oil in it. Plus, and it was low. That was another thing. Uh, Y'all saw how oil was leaking all out this valve cover and leaking under onto the machine and down here on this metal part. Uh, so I was gonna have to seal the valve cover anyways. I was gonna have to reseal it anyway. So really I had to bust under here anyways. Uh. So before I put the exhaust rocker arm in, um, this valve is stuck. And that's another thing that you want to check. You wanna make sure the valves aren't stuck. See how this one is going down? When you when I try to push this one down, it's stuck. So what happened is this valve started sticking and that's what broke the exhaust rocker arm because it was trying to push it down, but it wasn't going down. And uh, so it cracked up here. And um, that led to a, a whole lot of other issues. So check to make sure your valves aren't stuck. That's another, th another thing you wanna check under here as well as your belt and uh, your, um, your valves and rocker arms. So um, also really you wanna check your compression release too. Right here on this, uh, this um, gear, just because this can fail and this can cause your hard your hard pull start as well and that can be a whole lot of issues and you'll have to replace this this wheel um so uh, i already checked mine it appeared to be good so uh i just got the rocker arm and we're going to uh get this valve unstuck and put the rocker arm in so i'm going to use a mallet and this little bar right here so pretty much, you kind of want to hit this with the mallet. Make sure, make sure it's rubber because you don't want to damage the valves or the springs. All right, uh, take your adjuster, your valve adjuster screw out of your rocker arm. It's right up here with a nut and that's essentially what's tapping your valve and the top of the valve and pushing it uh pushing it down so um we're gonna put it in and make sure you have a filler gauge to get the uh exact gap between that 
in the valve. <laughs> now put your nut on. We got it at Maddie. Alright, so um so it'll be at top dead center when the cam lobe is pointing directly up is what I've come to That's see. Like see. That's um, for the right. The right there. Show y'all again. Oh, it's not wet. It's not wet. Boom. Yeah, man. Still. Screwdriver getting hung up on this. All right. Boom. It's hitting the rocker arm, pushing the valve stem down, taking in fuel and air mixture. As you can see, the screwdriver is down. Pushing it up. Oh man, it's hard to do this while recording. And then, boom. Right there. So yeah, the cam lobe will be pointing directly up. It's actually got a little mark too. I believe that's your TDC mark. So that's your combustion right there. Boom. And now we're gonna install the rocker arm and then we gotta adjust the valves. And uh, like I said, make sure you, uh, make sure you uh, uh, move over your tap, tap it screw or your lifter screw, your adjustment screw, whatever you wanna call it, I mean, Call it whatever. Essentially, that is what is pushing down right here on your valve stem and pushing that down to open up your exhaust valve to let your exhaust gases out. Um, and on all value uh, valves will always have to be adjusted. It has to be uh, right around the specification. Uh, right around the specification. Um if it's off it can cause big issues so we um got filler gauges oops we got filler gauges i'm going to tell you all the specs and show you how to adjust valves on this machine at least and uh you can pick these up for cheap this this was like five bucks at harbor freight so uh let's get this adjusted and get this machine to run again six thousandths eight thousandths i believe so um I, I think that's what i said is that what i said anyways yeah so that's what you want to adjust them at and i'll show y'all how to do that all right so let's see where this one's at <laughs> what's a ah so this one yeah it's this one is going to need to be adjusted too anyways so it's just, uh, you want a nice little drag. Um, you want a little pressure on it. Not too much where it's real hard to pull, but you don't want it to be so loose like that. You, you want it to be like right at that perfect median where you feel a little pressure, but not too much where it's hard to put it in or put it out. So yeah, we're going to tighten this one up. So when I hold it with these needle nose, then you can get your pliers on the adjuster screw your lifter screw and then you can turn it left or right in this case i need to tighten it to bring it down to have that perfect clearance right there so uh man it's going to be hard to record this while i'm trying to uh let's see if i can boom oh perfect all right so we're gonna 
Tighten that up a little bit. So see how it's very hard to pull the filler gauge? That's gonna be too much. So I'm gonna back it off of here. Boom. Right there, that's almost it. Uh, back it off just a little more. And keep in mind when you tighten this nut, it's gonna tighten the screw a little too. So you wanna take it off just a little more than what you think. Cause when you tighten the uh, nut up, it's gonna turn the cap it screw, your lifter screw, it's gonna turn it in a little more. So that feels perfect right there. Okay, so now what you wanna do is, what I'm gonna do, hold that and then bring that in a little, boom. Oh, what the? Oh, yeah. It is so much easier with the wrench. Y'all be better than this. Tighten that up. Boom. All right, that's money. I think. I'm gonna tighten it just a little more. All right, we're gonna call that good. That feels perfect right there. Boom, boom, boom. All right, now let's run that back through it. Boom, perfect. Now the exhaust valve at eight thousandths. So I'm gonna just check it where it's at. And um, that is pretty close. So <laughs> I tried to measure the where this was on the old rocker arm, the cracked one. Uh the one that cracked because of the valve sticking. And uh, I like measured it with the uh, measuring tape just to get it as close as I could. And that is actually pretty damn close. That's crazy. But we want it as close to spec as we can. So let's do that. Boom. All right. Turn that in a little. Nope. All right, right there. Turn it in more. A little more. Ooh, there we go. Back it off a little. So that's gonna be good right there for sure. Now gonna tighten this up. 
Oh, I messed it up. Crap. Right there. That's where we want it. Like I said, this is so much easier to do with a nine mil wrench, I think. What's a nine, yeah. Yeah, cause my 10 was a little too big. But like I said, we do what we can. Oh. All right, so I already got the mating surface for the valve cover cleaned up. So you just wanna get it as clean as you can. Um, Right here, I went over it with brake cleaner and kind of with the razor blade just to get it as as cleaned up as I can. It doesn't have to be like straight up perfect just because the RTV, it's a RTV sealer or gasket maker. It's not like it's a carburetor gasket or something, but you still want it to seal up nice. So I got it as clean as I can. Same with the valve cover itself. You um just get as much as you can really. I cleaned this up pretty good. Um, like I said, it's not like it's a carb gasket, you know, and, uh, I went over it with the razor blade and some like, uh, penetrating oil and brake oil. Just get it as nice as you can and don't worry about nicking the metal just because a gasket maker will fill in, fill in those nicks. It's not, like I said, it's not like it's a carburetor gasket or something like that or where the carburetor meets to the motor. It's, it's just a valve cover, but, uh. You still don't want no leaking oil out of this like how it was uh, before when I showed y'all the oil was leaking out. And uh, so, um, yeah, let's um, make sure also make sure that there's no big pieces in here that'll fall off into your motor and and uh, and build up in your motor or, or get down in your crankshaft or or in your uh, crankcase or anything. You don't want nothing like that. Or that it can get in uh, up here in your cam gear and stuff. So uh, I got this one cleaned out. It's ready to put on. Doesn't have to be a stupid amount. Just enough to seal off. Seal off your valves. All right, so we got this ready. Um, I put a good bit down here, probably too much to be honest, but I just don't want that leaky oil issue again. Um, and again, I don't know if that's because there was too much oil in the machine or uh, like I said, if it was tipped over and the oil was just sitting uh, like, like uh, you know, sideways on the motor instead of down in the... Uh, in the bottom portion of the engine. Uh, either way, I don't want that to happen again because you don't want to lose oil in these machines. It'll lead to further damage in your internals and uh, just all that nasty stuff. So I'm personally going to let that sit and, uh, and dry just a little bit before I stick it on, especially with the amount that I put down here. Just, uh, just to kind of get it started drying before I Put the cover on. All right, let's go ahead and put the valve cover on. But uh, you know, like I was saying earlier. You know, when your motor like this is, is backfiring through the carburetor, um, that that can usually be a telltale sign of a valve issue. So definitely always take a look under your valve cover if your engine is backfiring like that and spitting oil out the carb and whatnot. Or it may have been spitting oil out the carb because the motor had tipped over and all the oil was like I was saying sitting like like that instead of like down there oops